Welcome back to Outdoors with the Morgans. It is first thing in the morning and shaping up to be a miserable day. Rain most of the day today, matter of fact, for the next five days. But we've got a lot of windshield time ahead of us. We are headed all the way to Romney, West Virginia. It's about three hours and 15 minutes. Maybe a little longer. I'm pulling a trailer, an empty trailer, because we're bringing something back. dealership down here I've never done any business with them and we're gonna pick up a buggy a side by side not for us uh, Levi bought a Kawasaki mule and I told him I would pick it up so Romney's about an hour and 15 minutes I guess it would be southeast of the cabin and I'm a little concerned because I don't see any cars here I hope they're open all right we just loaded up in the rain We'll get a better look at this when uh, when we get back to the house. It's a Kawasaki Mule. It's a six-seater that transforms into a three-seater and gives you a longer bed. Nice machine. So we got all loaded up out there, and uh, Brian from Romney Cycles gave me a tour here. I was telling you when I got here, what I like most about this place is everything is under roof and protected from the elements and it's huge I, you have such a huge inventory here I'm, yes so what all do you have you have can-am kawasaki yamaha suzuki and suzuki yep and that's it yes sir triumph and triumph yep how long you guys been here 2008 2008 but the business has been around longer than that right oh lord i can't even think when it is the owner was 25 years old when he purchased it and now he's uh 60 65 67 yeah so he's been in the game for a long time yeah it's it was effortless i pulled in here it was pouring down rain yeah. paperwork in three minutes loaded up during the break in the rain and i'm um, just kind of walking around now but really really nice place really yeah. nice thank you i imagine people come from quite a distance everywhere yeah yep. west virginia is huge for side by sides and four wheelers and uh yeah yeah really nice though really appreciate the tour here yep. what do you got back here in the back back here is new units put together of course everything's out of the weather these are new units getting ready to go to sherman floor okay any idea how many units you have on hand at any given time hundreds and hundreds Four, four eighty, five hundred. Really? Yeah. Wow. And of course, if you get something worked on here, this is the to-do list. Uh, so a customer drops the machine off, and their unit will stay out of the weather. Yeah. In a secured building, norm system, all that good stuff. Right. I wonder how many square feet this place is. I've been walking around here for 20 minutes and I haven't seen half of it. <laughs> That's a big number. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate the tour, Brian. Yeah, I did. No problem. Thank you very much. Yeah, take your time, look around. I will. So this is Logan. You are the service manager here? Yep, my name's Logan. I'm the service manager here at Romney Cycles. And he just gave me some good news. He said Kawasaki, you think has the best warranty out there. Oh yeah, hands down best warranty. Great ride machines. Just overall, my kind of my top pick, but yeah. I mean, there's a lot of good brands out there, but it seems like they just stand out to me personally. Yeah, they said three-year bumper-to-bumper. Yep. comes with a three-year warranty from the factory, um, and then you could also purchase extended protection to take you further than that. But just from the factory, that three years really means a lot, I think. Yeah, especially stuff like that. If you're going to have a problem, unless you do something dumb, it's going to be at the beginning. You right. know what I mean? It's, yeah, work out the kinks. That yeah. way you don't have to worry about it. You got three years to work out any kinks that might be. So yeah, how long have you been here, and what's your background? Like, uh, how I've been here for six years. I uh, worked in parts for about four, and I've been in service for about three now. Um, so how I many mechanics kinda, you got? Uh, we have about uh, four mechanics, a couple setup guys that kind of get everything ready. So we're fully fully staffed here, ready to go. When say a new canyon side by side comes in, what all do you have to do to get it like ready for the showroom? Uh, some of them roll wire off the truck. You had to tighten the roll cage, check over it like that. Some of them come actually in a crate where you had to take them out, put the shocks on them, put the roll cage together. 
So some it kind of varies. Some okay. of them take a lot of time. Some of them take just a you know half hour or so. Right. Yeah. This is honestly the nicest dealership for like this that I've ever seen. It's yeah. Just... Big big dealership. We try to be friendly, kind of like a family owned business. Uh, keep everything clean. Have yeah. a great selection. Great prices. You got it all. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it. Like, your dad watches our channel, doesn't he? Yep, my dad, Kevin. He loves to watch your guys' channel. So when you guys stopped in here today, it kind of caught me off guard. Like, sounds familiar. So it's kind of nice to put a name to the picture there. Yeah. Well, very good. I appreciate your time, Logan. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So I just wanted to check something out. It has rained the entire trip down here. And it's dry inside that's the first real test for the uh diamondback all right i just left romney cycle and i'm getting ready to hit the road here but i want you to know i am not affiliated with these guys at all this is the first time i ever talked to them but i can highly recommend this dealership uh the whole process was effortless they were very thorough nice just all around a good experience romney cycle huge dealership and like i said the best part is these are expensive machines especially you get into those canium defenders and things like that everything's under roof everything's well taken care of i have been to other dealerships one near me actually by where i live and middle winter you'll see new machines that aren't put together sitting outside for months on end not like that here at all this is a big dealership been around a long time and that's a good sign as well so highly recommended nothing to do with them at all seems like a good company downtown romney west virginia nice little town i see something up here looks familiar seen this in some videos before all right, just left Romney, West Virginia a few minutes ago and the sun is trying to peek out. But while in Romney, had a really nice visit. I got to meet with Josh and Aaron from Wild and Wonderful Off Grid. We met at their cafe in Romney. It's not open yet, but that's coming pretty soon. But they are just super nice people. You know how nice they are on video? I think they're even nicer than that, for real. And it's nice just to sit down and visit for a little bit and uh, we talk quite often via text and this is the first time that I got to meet them in person and I didn't realize Romney Cycle was just down the street so I texted them early this morning and said hey you want to meet up today they said absolutely and it all worked out great but like I said just a great couple a great family hard working and uh, you probably already know about their channel but if you don't check it out wild wonderful off-grid and it's fantastic it really is but anyway i am on route 50 and it's just beautiful through here headed to oakland maryland then from there on to the cabin and we need to swap out some batteries and some trail cameras do a couple things and then we are going to run it on home but it's been a busy day on the road been a great day though so far great people at romney cycle Great people with Josh and Aaron. Everything appears to be in good shape here at the cabin. No damage from the last windstorm. I think that was just last week. 
But uh, by the way, this tree right here, I did not know what this was. I had no idea. And I asked Levi, and he said he thought it was a cucumber tree. And I thought he was nuts. But then he showed me one online, and I was pretty well convinced. And then uh, neighbor Greg down here, he's a logger, very knowledgeable. We we're standing over here talking one day. He says, oh, you got a cucumber tree there. So sure enough, that's what it is. So right now I'm going to hike back in the woods just a bit to the hot spot, I call it, or the sweet spot. And that camera I have back there, there's always something going on. It doesn't appear that it uh, rained as much here as it did everywhere else today. Like, not as much. It's really not, it's really not that wet here at all. All right, got the batteries changed in all the cameras. I'm out here on the uh, main trail now. But if you've been uh, watching our channel, I've been sawing a bunch of that red pine. That's what this stuff is right here. The white pine, we have some of that over by the cabin. And then the majority of it is down that direction, about 100 yards from there all the way to the other road. But there's literally thousands of these red pine and they need thinned they really do it would be quite the project i think the best way to do it would be uh mechanical means like a smaller feller buncher that could come in here and take down every other tree or two out of every three really and give them more room the ones that i'm sawing at home uh, I think they actually did manage those ones a little bit. If you look at the growth rings on some of them, they were real tight for the longest time. And then at some point, those trees got some more sunlight, had to have been opened up a little bit because the growth rings started getting a lot bigger. That's what really needs done down here. All right, just got back to the cabin. I'm going to button some things up and hit the road. I just noticed... Uh, Levi's new buggy got a little bit of road grime on it But the more I look at this the more I like it It's a nice machine 1000 I want to show you something here on the other side of it If you take This one panel off right here I'm not going to take it off because there's a bunch of tabs that'll take me forever to get it back on. But right behind this panel is a battery, air filter, and you can check the oil right there. That's pretty nice. Fuel right there. But like I said, the best part about this is that seat will fold down and you can have like a long bed or... It's a six-seater. When I was down there at Romney Cycle, I realized all I had was some real big straps and chains and binders. So I said to Brian down there, I better get some straps while I'm here. And he said, here, these will be good. And I said, how long are they? And he said, I just looked out the window. I saw your deck over trailer. These will be perfect. And he wasn't lying. Perfect length, front and back. All right, turned out to be a uh, pretty nice day. We're about an hour and 15 minutes from home, and I'm just stopping now to make the customary stop at Bass Pro. I'm not really looking for anything in particular, but uh, we'll see. Just window shopping. All right, I couldn't help myself. It was calling to me. Anyway, I'll report back tomorrow morning. All right, we're down at the sawmill here this afternoon. I got back from West Virginia last night about 7.30 or 8 o'clock, and it poured down the rain last night, overnight, all morning today. There's flooding all over the place, but we've got a little break in it right now, so we're going to make some lumber. But before we do, i got a funny story for you. Yesterday, I was telling you I stopped to see Josh and Aaron from Wild Wonderful Off Grid. Uh, well, they were kind enough. They gave me some soap and a candle they make they're handmade they make them they sell them on their website and they smell 
fantastic. I didn't even think I was really into that kind of thing, right? So driving home yesterday, I got this bag sitting beside me with these bars of like all natural soap, different scents. They smell fantastic. So every once in a while, I'm like getting a little whiff of the bag. I'm like, man, that smells good. And the whole truck smelled nice. So I'm driving across Interstate 68, and I did. I reached in the bag, I pulled out this bar of soap, and I'm like, I smell it as I'm driving. I'm like, that really smells good. Take another whiff. I look over, there's a West Virginia State Trooper passing me, right? And I'm like, just gave him a, hey, what's up? You know what I mean? He kept going, probably wondering, what in the world is that guy doing? But I wasn't doing anything wrong. I mean, technically, he may have gotten me for distracted driving, but I was focusing on the road. That reminds me years ago probably 10 years ago maybe even 15 years ago yeah i was coming home from work and it was late you know late to get home from work it was like 7 30 8 o'clock and i was almost to the driveway and melissa called me and she said we need a gallon of milk i said okay so i drive past the house i go into town get a gallon of milk well i pull back on our road and then as i'm driving up the road I'm going 15 miles an hour. There's this girl walking her dog right on the edge of the road. So I just kind of move over a little bit, give her some room, and I pull back into my lane once I got past her, and I see flashing lights behind me. I was getting pulled over. Well, I had no idea what I did wrong. So the cop comes up to the window, and I'm like, hey, what's the problem? And he says, driving in the middle of the road, that's a problem. I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, right back there, you're whole way across the yellow line. I said, I was giving that girl some room. And he said, what girl? And he didn't even see her. I said, well, if you didn't see her, you shouldn't be driving. And things started to deteriorate quickly. And uh, I knew who she was. I told her, told him her name. I said, you can see her walking into her house right now, right back there. And he still wanted my driver's license, registration, all that kind of stuff. So I gave him my registration. Well, back then you had a little sticker that you had to put on your license plate. You don't have them anymore. And... Uh, it was still in the envelope, wasn't on the truck. So he gave me a hundred and I think it was a hundred and five dollar fine for that and told me that I was lucky that he didn't have the truck towed. Okay, so things weren't going real well. And then he asked me, when was the last time I had a drink? And uh, I said, it was about five o'clock. And he looked at me and I said, I think it was a Saturday, like in 1989. There's a swing and a miss. I don't drink. I quit drinking probably a year or two. I can't even remember. After I was allowed to drink legally, I quit and uh, never had another drop after that. And so he was just kind of on a little fishing expedition to see if I was drinking. And it just makes you feel good that you didn't do anything wrong. You know, yes, I got a ticket for the uh, sticker but he was hoping to get much, much more. And uh, same thing yesterday. Cop was probably wondering what I was doing. I was glad I didn't have to explain. I was smelling soap, but I think I could have just gave him a whiff and he would understood. And if you think I'm crazy, if you would smell it, you would understand as well. It smells really good.
I got a little, uh, what did I get? I got some 4x4 sawed here. I needed those for some cribbing. I got some more four quarter sawn and some six quarter. So I just pulled up the uh, radar. Looks like in about an hour and a half, we're gonna get another round of rain. And then probably around 10 o'clock tonight. And then tomorrow is a 100% chance of rain. Thursday, 60%. Friday, 50%. It doesn't look good at all. It really doesn't. I'm glad that uh, like I could come down here this afternoon and get a little something done. If I can't get my hands on like the sawmill or a chainsaw or a log splitter or a piece of equipment for more than like 48 hours, it really drives me crazy. It does. So I was glad to get down here and get a little something done. I'm going to take this wood up, stack and sticker it. I still don't think it'll finish that lift up there. We'll have to see. So, by the way, I wanted to mention the uh, cabin that you saw at the first part of this video. Uh, you're going to see a flurry of activity there starting very soon. Uh, we're planning on kind of getting back to work down there the end of April. But the temperatures are rising. The weather's getting a little better besides the rain this week. Although, I think Thursday, yeah, they're calling for a couple inches of snow down there. But I actually have a contractor that's going to help do some stuff. Uh... And it's things that I can do, we can do, but we just have so many other things going on, it would be good to get some help down there. So that's what we're going to do to get that all buttoned up down there so we can enjoy it uh, this summer, fall, you know, hunting season next year, all that stuff. And spring gobbler's coming up pretty soon, I think April 15th, which I never turkey hunted in West Virginia, but I think that's a Monday. I'm not sure... If that's normal, I have no idea. But me and a buddy are going to go down and do some turkey hunting. But uh, it's kind of weird. When I go down to West Virginia for any reason, uh, even yesterday, you know, I just stopped at the cabin for a little bit, picked up Levi's new buggy, and, uh, you know, met Josh and Aaron. I always feel like I'm on vacation when I'm in West Virginia. I don't know why. I just... Uh, I really like it down there. I do. It's a it's a great place to be, and I really enjoy it. And I'm glad that we were able to uh, get a piece of property down there. People ask if we're going to move down there. I don't think that's uh, I don't think we'd do that. Not that we don't want to or wouldn't want to, but with Hunter, Hunter likes uh, routine. He likes things the same, and I just don't know how it would go. You know what I mean? With him moving down there. Now there is a Sheets in Oakland, Maryland, so that's only about 12 or 15 minutes away, if that. I don't know, we'd have to see, but uh, I don't think that's a chance that we are willing to take. But like I said before, we'll have to see what goes on around here. A lot of things up in the air right now. You know what I mean? Not just uh, here, but countrywide. You know what I mean? Nationally, there's a lot of things up in the air, and we're gonna just have to see how things shake out. Okay. But anyway, I'm rambling on. I think that's about it for today's video. I really appreciate y'all being here. I really do. And I will catch you on the next one.